Hey everyone, my name is Danilo Petrovic. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kuda. I'm Evgeny Donsko. I'm Henry Laksan. I'm Peter Turepko and, and you're listening to the Game to Love podcast. Hey, welcome back, tennis fans. Oh, wow. It just feels like it was a whirlwind over the past week. Uh, we had such an amazing storyline. The big thing that happened, it happened. Novak Djokovic, the record breaker, as you can see above, grabbing his sixth Paris Masters title, his 37th in total, and getting nailed on as year-end number one for a seventh year. JG, wow, what a week. What a week, man. For, for Novak Djokovic, it's been incredible. He's come from the lows of that US Open. Um, it's been one of them years which has been tough for him, but yet you could still argue one of his greatest. He had the crushing defeat before that at the Olympics, but just still keeps bouncing back and showing how resilient he is of a man. To break this record here with the Masters is something ridiculous. We're going to go through all of the records, all of the stats in this podcast. This is a Novak Djokovic special. Uh, we've both got the flags. And and listen, something what I thought was quite interesting on our channel, uh, I know we've got a music video set in the GOAT debate with Novak Djokovic in it. And he's yes. doing just that right now because he is kind of settling it. And for me, I'm going to make a big statement. Because I've noticed that that video is trending right now more so because people are all clicking it. All the Djokovic fans are back and they're all listening to Settling the Goat debate again. I honestly think if he's able to... You, a lot of people are going to argue he already is their greatest. But yeah. for me, I will actually say that confidently if he can get the overall amount of slams. And I know he's rep they're all tied at 20 at the moment. Um, if he can, say, go 23 and the others aren't catching him, then, yeah, for me, he is. That is the only thing he needs to really do now because all the other records... He's smashed, isn't he? He's totally smashed it. And uh, it's one of those things, isn't it? I, but when we hit that US Open, and I know that you sort of reminded me, and I wasn't really aware of it uh, coming into Paris, was talking about, obviously, how he lost to Zverev in the yep. Olympics, and he was very down. But then he avenged the loss to Zverev at the US Open in the five-set thriller that went on till 5 a.m. in the UK. Uh, and then he lost to Medvedev in the final, probably a bit tired. Medvedev in great form. And then he avenges the loss of Medvedev uh, here in Paris. It was fantastic. And that gave me the sense that Novak Djokovic is definitely not going anywhere soon. So he's still on the radar and he's still going to be plugging away until he tries to get that 21st Grand Slam. That's for sure. That is literally the only thing left. And Gene here, one of our patrons, uh, if he wins the Australian Open, he'll be the GOAT. Well, people can say he is already. Um, the thing is, you've got to argue, what happens then if Rafa wins Roland Garros afterwards? Does that mean he loses the GOAT status? It's hard to say. I feel like you can only say it after they've all retired because you can't keep chopping and changing between the, the, the three of them. They're all great. Everyone can make a case for all of them. But right now, it's really looking quite difficult. And I'm a big Rafa fan to look past this man behind me, Novak Djokovic. What he's doing yeah. is just special. And we're going to talk about that final as well. Uh, maybe we'll just start with that. I know you've got some quotes here from uh, Novak after it. Yeah. And this is what he had to say. What a day. What a week. Blessing after blessing. My loves, uh, both my children witnessing them at this moment, crowned for years of hard work, my amazing team, fantastic matches, many memories to take away, grateful to bring ho home another tree in the woods to where this wolf sleeps. <laughs> uh, I, nice. partic I particularly like that last line. It is quite good. Obviously, they, the, the trophy looks like a tree. Uh, yeah. I never understood why, but it's quite cool, to be fair. I like yeah, it. It was nice seeing him embrace with his kids. And I saw a yeah. post-match interview after Same. the match. And he was talking about how special that is. The fact that his kids have can now come to an age where they can come to a match and understand what's going on. They're not just there like in as, as kid, complete, like out of it, like really, really young. They're a bit older now. They have a better understanding of what's happening. And he said that is the most special thing. Um, his greatest achievement is his kids still. And I love that in, about him. It makes him uh, more of a special sort of dad, not just a tennis player. And yeah, it was it was quite emotional seeing him embrace with his kids, I thought. I thought it was really nice. I just thought that was just such a touching 
uh, end to the whole tournament, uh, if I'm honest. And you saw him watching the footage of his like little girl, Tara, and uh, his son, Stefan, as well. And obviously, Yelena always there yeah. in his box cheering him on. But just to see that embrace of him and his kids was just like, you could see he was sort of like welling up a little yeah. bit whilst doing the interview. He said, oh, th I didn't even realize like what it looked like from an outside perspective. But he said, oh, that, that, that's just so nice. That's just what yeah. he does. Everything for is for those kids and happy that they're. And that's why he wants to keep going as well, he yeah. said. He just wants to keep playing so that they can witness more and more of them and actually have the memories of uh, him winning stuff and they can be there in the stands and maybe one day we'll see a couple more Djokovic's on the tour. Who knows? <laughs> I'm sure they got a good coach. I'm sure about that. I feel like Stefan Djokovic as well just has a good name to it. I feel like we could see him doing yeah. well. And he was so pleased. You can see he's getting older now and he's understanding what's happening and how great his dad is. It was nice seeing him smiling. I know Gene's talking about that as well. Um, if you want to go down a little bit, we'll see what else he said. Sure. So this is just some photos of him. Um, yeah, really nice. With the trophy. Yeah, there's the one with the with his kids there, which was yeah. just at the end there. Oh, so nice. Uh, don't know how to go back now. Shouldn't just have tap off it. <laughs> oh, apologies. There we go. I'm back again. Right. So we're just going down <laughs> onto this next part. Yeah, this is just him talking about Medvedev as well. So he said, "What I love mm. uh, and respect about Daniel Medvedev is his commitment to being true to what he is." at all times, being authentic and original. Doesn't matter what others think, say or expect, he keeps his heart and mind checked and measures his deeds based on his values. When I see people who embrace their nature and identity and work hard to get better every day, I know they are in for greatness. I am looking forward to seeing more of you, Medvedev. I know I what I don't no, I know I won't have it easy with you around and you are a great rival to have. He's also gone on to say afterwards he is his greatest rival right now. Yeah, so right now, which I thought was quite that's quite a big statement to make. And some still some good players still got Rafa playing and that, and uh, sister pass as well, running close. But he looks at Medvedev as his greatest rival right now. Not uh, to be fair on the hard courts, you'd have to agree. I, I'm, I'm, I'm with yeah. that, but as very still was a big, quite a big rival as well. So, yeah, I think that was quite telling of him. And he definitely has a lot of respect for Medvedev. I think he likes his uh. That, that the whole way he sort of, um, you know, Medvedev carries himself on the court yeah. and the way he acts with the crowd. He likes his very, his authentic self. I, I think so. And I thought it was quite, uh, and I mean, he's very, very complimentary to about Medvedev as well. I think Medvedev's the same back. You can see they have a great laugh at the net and stuff. And they even embrace each other really nicely when there's the ceremonies and stuff. And obviously Djokovic was devastated at the US Open uh, after his loss, but I think it was quite nice, even at the Olympics. Like Zverev was very, uh, very nice to, to Djokovic at the net, and was just very apologetic that he sort of crushed his dream and all that type of thing. So there's a real uh, sense of respect. I thought it was quite funny in that interview where he was talking about his kids and stuff, and he was yeah. saying, "Oh, City Pass, obviously Medvedev and uh, Dominic team." These guys, they are the. Net. It's only a matter of time until uh, they take over in the sport. So. Maybe in 15 years, <laughs> when I'm not, when I've stopped playing. And then, uh, yeah, he's yeah, obviously was funny. joking. Yeah. I saw that as well. But um, I, he's got a good sense of humor, though. Like, that's, that's before sure. we talk about this one, can we just go to number four, please? Sure. So this one here, uh, Mark Petchy, this is what he had to say about the match. So we'll talk about the match for a bit because obviously we did cover it. Shout out to all the new subscribers we've gained from that one. Uh, it's yes. good to see a lot of positive feedback. If you haven't seen it already, go check out the stream. It was quite entertaining and what a match it was. Mark Petchy describing it as one of his top five uh, matches of a lifetime in a best of three final. I think that is exagger exaggerating slightly. It probably wasn't for me, but that's just my opinion. I think it was high quality. And just to touch on that, I was so blown away by Djokovic. I didn't actually think he was going to win. I thought Medvedev was going to beat him and he proved me wrong time and time again. He's done it. And he's done it again here in this final. Medvedev was the favourite going into it as well. And he's been yeah. playing so well. He won this event last year. And Djokovic, what he showed, especially after he was in the first set, I was even saying how important the first set was. Didn't turn out to be because he'd done exactly what he did against her catch and just turned it on, um, stepped on the pace. And he changed his tactics as well. I don't know if you've got a tweet regarding that. If not, don't worry. 
But what he sure. did differently with his tactics, I can tell you which one it is, maybe. I've Go got on. it here, probably. Let me do one sec. Yeah, just tell um, me who it's by, and I'll t- I can uh, bring it up. Uh, Sarah. Oh, okay, it's the next one along. So, yeah, right. so these are the tactics. Brilliant tactics employed by Djokovic. His impeccable serve and volleying has won him the match. Med is too OP at the baseline. Solution, bring him forward and make points shorter. Djokovic solved the Medvedev puzzle. I think that's exactly what he was able to do. And that's why I, I brought this tweet forward, because I like the way she's summed it up. This is a, yeah. this, That's what he changed, I feel. He I, did make them yeah. shorter. And even the ones that were a bit longer, he was always... Um, he was trying to. He was trying different things. You could see he was working him out while he was doing it. And even if he did lose the point, he just responded differently in the next one. And it was it was bit, becoming a bit difficult to guess what he was going to be doing next. Uh, yeah. It wasn't just always going for the drop shots, but what he was doing on his serve, which was made him so much better in that, especially the third set after he broke, he got game to love. Was um, serve and volleying. Yeah, and his volume was great. That was the one thing I said. When I know that when the match started yesterday, that was the one thing I thought that he had to change uh, from the US Open final was do not get locked in the rallies on the baseline with uh, Daniel Medvedev because Medvedev can stay there for days. And Djokovic had to shorten the points. That was the one key thing to be able to win this match was shorten the points. And he did it. And he even said in that post-match interview as well, he... he noted a few things every time he plays Daniel Medvedev he says he's learning about his yeah. game every single time as well he said Medvedev's improving every time as well but he gets a little insight every time he plays him into his little the little things he does on court let's say and that sort of there's re- like recurring things which you pick up on and he's very smart on the court his on board computer picks up things better than anyone else on the tour that's for sure so he, he sort of did solve the puzzle, but it took him, well, maybe, uh, I wouldn't say three attempts because he beat him in Australia, but he obviously has lost two of the last uh, of the last three matches before this, uh, before this match. So he did sort of solve w- one of the puzzles why he lost the other matches. And yep. is this ominous for Medvedev moving forward? Or will he now make adjustments and will we see an even better match next time than they both play? Not just that, he keeps the the head-to-head against all of the top players now. Djokovic has a favourable head-to-head. Yep. It would have been 5 all between these two Correct. if he was to lose. But now, considering he's won, he's, he's just made the gap a little bit bigger and he's gone 6-4 up. Um, brilliant, yeah. He, he's, he's, everything does look like he is the greatest because he's winning on a lot of things right now. Um, just the one he's tied at is the overall Grand Slams, which he could get come sort of January time, sort of start of the new year with Australian Open. Well, he can double up then as well. He can go into double figures for the first time uh, on a Grand Slam event. And if you start doing that, well, that's when all the Rafa fans have sort of got their that to fall back on, that he's won the French Open so many times that he's so dominant. But I think the same goes for Djokovic at the Australian Open. He's got nine of them. Uh, if you give him one more, <laughs> it's, uh, it goes into double figures, which I think it's going to be incredible. If he manages to get it done there, that's sort of his, his home, so yeah. to speak, uh, on the Grand Slam stage. Uh, I think it would be no better fitting place for him to do it, if I'm yeah. honest. Exactly. Let's move to some of the other tweets. Yeah, sure. Next one. Should we go uh, to number two first? We're not number, done that. No. Sorry, apologies. Yeah, let's go so back. Novak's uh, 2011 uh, was insane. 10 titles, three slams, 41 matches unbeaten, 10 1 versus Federal. But if Novak wins tomorrow, which he did, uh, 2021 becomes an even better season. So he's got the most weeks as number one ever, most yep. years as number one ever, ties for most grand slams ever, <laughs> only second <laughs> person ever to win the first three slams of a year. So although maybe this season wasn't as good as 2011, what it was, was he's managed to break a lot of uh, uh, t- like records this year. So 2021 is going to be super memorable for what he's been able to do and been able to achieve. He um, missed out one as well. The most Masters titles now ever, 37. Yeah. So yeah. that one was missed off the list. <laughs> Come on, well, give him his due. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he's gone, what, one clear of Rafa, 37 Masters titles. How many can he get? Well, you'd think 
<laughs> You'd think, I don't know. I don't want to say 40. stupid, but I'd it's going to be maybe 45, 50. Well, I don't know. Don't go too crazy. I'm going to say no, it's definitely... I think he, I, I don't, no, listen, I think he's got a lot of years left, Ben. And I reckon 45 has got to be the benchmark. Yeah, I'd say that's a reasonable amount. I was going to say you're going into the 50s then. I was no, like, he, could, right. he could make We don't know. He might. Who knows how many years are left? Who yeah. knows how many slams he's got left in him as well? I went for him for, to have to finish his career in 25 slams. I think it's... I was worried after the US Open that I thought, is this the, the start of the decline? Now I feel a little bit more optimistic after seeing that performance that all he <laughs> needed was some rest. And now he can focus on the slam race. He's got all the... Mar- yeah, he might not be playing as many Masters it, now. It, that's, as- that's the other thing. What I was thinking as soon as I said it, maybe 40 was going to be a push because he's well, it'll be about 40 or so because he's not going to be playing that many, I don't think. I think he's going to prioritise the slams. Yeah. Um, a bit like you've seen how Serena does now as well. Yeah. They're just focusing on playing sort of the real big event. Of course, he's going to play some, some Masters though. And I think he's still going to pick up a fair few. So let's just see what happens with that. Uh, moving on to next one. I'll try and work out which one. I think it was. Nope, that's not that one. Apologies. This one? No, let's just. I think you've okay. not done the third one, have you? Have I not? This one? Yeah, there we go. Apologies. So Patrick uh, Ma- uh, McEnroe here. Say it with me, people. Novak Djokovic, the greatest male tennis player ever. This is what we're going to start seeing. Now, everyone's going to be saying that for sure because he's got a, r- a real claim for it. I'm just a stubborn Rafa fan. I can't say it yet until he gets the <laughs> overall, but it's hard to look past it. Yeah, it really is. He's setting records. He's the record breaker at the moment. So I don't think anybody really can argue with it. So should we go to the Oleg one now? Yeah. Because we've done all of those ones. So this was what Medvedev was saying. I don't know if you want to zoom in because I can't see that. So this is, do you know what you were saying when, when we were doing the live watch along? We didn't actually hear what he was saying. This yeah. This is yeah. what it was. So okay. he's like, but I think it's actually easier to enjoy life when you have no brain because <laughs> then you just scream. No matter if the guy is serving or not, you just scream and you enjoy life. I wonder what it is. I want to see how it is inside because I have no idea. That's, it's true because it's just like uh, I've been a it's baby. It's basically cooler than just like idiots. The oh, people babies. just scream out. They've got nothing in their brain. They're just literally child's just like, brain. <laughs> <laughs> child's brain. <laughs> I pretty much is saying. I thought you'd like this one because this is how this is what you make of all the crowds, right? I think you and Medvedev are on the same page. I think we. Well, I feel sorry for Medvedev in a lot of these matches because. Every time he's about to serve, it seems the crowd just seem to want to scream over the top of when he's serving all the time. Uh, he's got one of the best serves in the game. I'd quite like to see him actually uh, use it rather than all of these cr- crowds. It's gonna, is this going to become a running thing? Scream whilst Medvedev serving? Seems to be at the moment. I wish it wasn't. <laughs> feel sorry for the guy. <laughs> Give him a chance. Yeah, it is a bit annoying. Well, oh, it's annoying. Okay, that's good. JG, no, it, it is up. a little bit annoying sometimes, <laughs> but if it's for the whole duration of the of the match and it's consistent, then I think players should just have to get on with it a little bit. It's just the way it is. All right, we're going to have to agree to disagree, I guess, yeah. on this one. Uh, next one, we've got. Uh, well, this is Jose Morgado. I'll go to guy on Twitter. He's saying the new ATP top ten. He's listing down here. Yeah, so you've got Zverev moving up into third. Um, does it mean much? I don't know. That's another debate. Sissa <laughs> uh, Pass, he's moved down to fourth. Settling the third uh, debate. Rublev, he's moving up. He's playing terrible. But he's moved up. I don't know how. <laughs> well Rublev done. got in good form, but he's just overtaken the Dow, which is just, I don't know. That just seems crazy to me. It's nuts, um, isn't it? Her catch, nine, Sinner, ten. So pretty, oh, I like the top ten, if I'm honest. Well done, her catch. Crazy to see no Federer, but just the way it is yeah that is pretty mad sinner uh just missing out obviously on those uh world tour finals yeah but he'll be back if anyone drops out i'm sure he'll be in you got some more ranking ones here as well uh, i think this is sort of moving away from Djokovic a little bit but we can still do it we'll have a quick uh, look career highs for some of these players um of no Alcaraz. he's 32 now fritz the number one american player in 23 duckworth Crack the top 50, so well done Brilliant. to him. You've got uh, Gaston as well. Crack the top 100 and some. He's 67th. 
And wow. Griggs ball with what he's doing on the challenger court. <laughs> Go on, Tyler. He's, doing it for, he's going to probably get into the top 50 just from playing challengers. He keeps winning them. He's going for the, the record amount in one uh, challenger sort of season or one top, one season and being seven titles, which is mad. Didn't he win another one yesterday as well? I don't know. If, did he win it? Because I'm not, I, if he won I, it, then he won seven. I didn't see it. I saw he was in the final. I didn't get, catch the, the back end of the match, though. No, I'll let you have a look at that, but maybe yeah, just go on to the next one. So, yeah, he <laughs> did. So, he's won seven, seven challenger titles this year, which is mad. Well done to him. Uh, well, he's got one of the greatest buttons, so that probably works well for him. Happy wait, for you've him, got though. Nori as well in front of Federer. <laughs> no, finally. <laughs> that is pretty mad to think that Nori, if you'd have said to him at the beginning of the year, you're going to be overtake Roger Federer this year, I'm sure he would have... Uh, Bitting your hand off for that. All right, move on to the next one. Oh, look at so that. This is just, this probably should have been at the start, but we're doing yeah. it here. This is just some of the trophies. This puts it into perspective the amount of Masters titles, all 37 of them. And there he is, kissing the most recent one. Um, I think they put, what's the caption? Go up. Oh, just Masters. Master of the Masters. <laughs> really is the Master. He's got another nickname. He's got so many nicknames, Djokovic, but he's now going to be known as the Master of the Masters as well because no one's won as many as him. And yeah, it's pretty mad. We've got uh, Jugoslav in the chat saying, imagine Medvedev in, uh, was it the World Tour Final 2019? So, I'm not sure so, what that means. But uh, well, sure. instead of Djokovic, where 90% of people booing him and cheer when he have a mistake. Um, well, I think they do, to be fair. Well, that's, what, that's, that's the whole point, Jugoslav. They do do that to Medvedev, don't they do to Djokovic? Yeah, they really do. So then I, I think they're both, they're, they're, there's a lot of similarities between the two. They both have a lot of adverse crowds and they've both done very well to get through it. I think Medvedev, if I'm honest, should look at someone like Djokovic and sort of emulate him because if he can, he's going to have a very good career. Well, I wanted to just move away from that and just to talk about this. Uh, I really like the trophy. I don't know why, but I noticed when he was talking in the press conference afterwards that it has his name like put all over the trophy as well. I don't know if you can see it. Like on every little bit, it's got Djokovic, Djokovic written down all these little parts, all in this. Yeah, is, that, is that not everyone who's won it? I don't think so. I'm not sure. It's got to be other is, names. Is as it? Well, right? I don't know. I don't well, know. Usually on a trophy, you have everyone's is, name. Is it individual it. for each person who wins the trophy? That would be. Good, yeah, that's not it, the way you know how trophies were. They will have everyone's name on there. So usually, I, know, it but I don't know if every year when they give it out, do they put? I'll have to go back and look at last year's now because I didn't spot that last year on there, and I just thought, oh, that's pretty cool, but. I can just see Djokovic, but he has won it a lot of times. <laughs> well, it's... we got no. Oh no, it's everyone. So one is okay. saying it's all the players who were in the draw. Ah, oh, okay, brilliant. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, nice so touch. Just... I think it's a really cool trophy as well. So that's yeah, an really interesting like thing. It. I didn't know it was all the players' names. Oh, uh, that's but brilliant. Appreciate that for, sh for sharing. Yeah, cheers for telling me that because I'd never noticed it before uh, earlier on today, and I just thought just because I could see Djokovic's name twice at the start, I thought. Have they just got his name all over it? But there you go. It just probably yeah. make it the biggest because he won. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, makes sense, doesn't it? Right. Uh, move away from that one. Uh, did we already have that one? We've done that, yeah. Yeah, apologies. And then so, this one. This is, this is a really good one. I like this. So we've got Novak Djokovic. I think it's Ben Rothenberg. Uh, Novak Djokovic, career slams, masters and world tour finals. And we've got a little emoji next to all of them. Yeah. We're going to have to work out what the emojis are. But obviously, the first one, Australia, you've, you've won that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, going for La Decima yeah. uh, next year. That'll be mad. Yeah. And the most telling, if you just zoom out a little bit or just so okay. we can see all of them, that he's won two or more in all of them, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> That's yes. the that's the first thing I see, and this is that's visual representation of it. This is the Djokovic dominance in the slams yeah. and the Masters. He's won at least two of all of them. No one's done that. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone ever will either. Um, it's so tough. The only thing you'd expect him to do is just sort of top up some of them twos. Maybe another roll on Garros. <laughs> yes, I think he would love to get another roll on Garros. All that does is just cement the. Uh the argument against the Rafa fans. If he manages to beat Rafa again at Roland Garros, it's just another uh, thorn in the side of all the Rafa fans out there. Yeah, uh, and I think the other one, the dice is Monte Carlo um, yeah. and the roller coaster Cincinnati. Maybe. I think that's what I've worked out. <laughs> I'm so not got, the best at Yeah, so we've got 
Monte Carlo, Cincinnati, they're other two, they're the other ones that he's won only two of, so that would Rome? make sense. Is that the pasta? This must be Rome, surely. The snail, the snail, we've got RS asking, that is uh, Roland Garros. <laughs> and the rain one, I only know this because if you scroll down, it yeah, has yeah. It. If you can, no, go down. I'm like, you keep going. No, yeah, there we go. It explains what this, that is. So as Turin fast approach, the umbrella will be swapped out for the timeless, I think that's an eight ball pole. Eight ball, uh, yeah. Please, a round of applause for the umbrella for her years of experience, exemplary service. Obviously, it rains a lot in London, so we're moving the rain one off, and it's going to be an eight ball pole. Yeah, well, exciting stuff. Uh, well, it's just amazing how many he's won. Just to look at it, and just to, when you look at his Masters records as well, and just how much how many wins and how many greens there are across all of the years. It's just pretty crazy. He he might have gone this year without winning one. That's how crazy it could have been. And the last time that happened was uh well 2017, but he had that was the year of the injury. So yeah. that's injury is the only thing that stops Djokovic winning Masters. It's it would appear uh, next year. I'm sure he'll, he'll get another one. But will he get another slam to go with it? That's the question. Surely he's got to get at least one slam next year. Surely. Is the Grand Slam a possibility next year? That's the well, real question. Uh, no. Okay. I, don't, I, I think, listen, I, I said I said this. I don't think... I think being at, having the opportunity for him to have got the Grand Slam doesn't happen. I think it happens once in a lifetime, that opportunity, where he's one game away against Medvedev. I don't think we're going to see it in tennis. That's just my opinion. I've always said that. So I don't think we're going to see it again. But if anyone can do it, Djokovic can. Well, I think if he takes a takes a few breaks in between and just picks it right and just keeps fresh, he's, he'll probably be favourite for Wimbledon. He'll be favourite for the Australian Open. It's just whether he can get a good draw in Roland Garros and get through it. We know he can win it. Uh, and the US Open, as we know, Medvedev's territory now. Can he really uh, get one over on him again and uh, manage to get get the lot, get the clean sweep? One thing I want to add about this as well is the return of Dominic Team. Oh, we know finally. he's going to be back. He's won the US Open uh, the year before Medvedev, and Roland Garros. He's got to a few finals, so he's going to be back in them two, and he's they're two of his best ones. So yeah. that's why I think Djokovic is going to be it's going to be tricky as long as Team's playing at the same level he was before. And he can find that. I know he has a lot of issues with team as well. He's been yeah. beat teams been beating him recently anyway. So I think that's where he could sort of come a bit unstuck. Well, potentially, but I think I don't know. There's just he's just given me renewed hope for the next for 2022 now. Obviously, the big thing that's going to be on everybody's uh minds is the Australian Open, the vaccine thing, and we'll we'll have to wait and see on that what the uh, the final say is. Uh, I know that there's still talks going on behind closed doors. We won't get to hear what uh, what the full action is going to be or what the actual action of all the players is going to be yet. So keep your ear to the ground and keep your eyes on GTL because we'll keep you updated as soon as that uh, news breaks. We want to know who's going to be in Australia, that's for sure. Yeah, I want to talk to you about that. But before we do, uh, just on team again, I wanted to say team uh, has made the Australian Open final two and uh, team has beaten Djokovic five of their seven meetings. So their last seven, I think. So that is quite telling the fact that team has had his number and he's going to be in trouble if he faces him, I think, this year uh, or next he's year. Sorry. Got to come. He's got to come back from that injury though he really does it's a not a good injury it's a one it's a wrist like, one yeah it's a re it can be a reoccurring one and i'm hoping it's not going to be cuz i want to see dominic team back come on we want more rivals for people like djokovic it's what makes him grow greater and greater you get to see the big matches from djokovic with these other competitors you don't get to see his greatness in as I don't know, you don't see his star rise, I feel, if he's just wiping the floor with all these other people. But you do see it when he comes back from two sets down against Sitabas yeah. to claim the, the Grand Slam, stuff like that. We get to see how good Djokovic is. And I just want to see 
a full field of players. I want to see Rafa back. I want to see Roger back. I want to see team back. I want to see all of them. Medvedev firing and Djokovic there. He's going to be top of the heap. Everyone trying to pick him off. And will they be able to do it is the question, though. Well, the big question I want to ask you is, will Djokovic go to Australia? Well, this is We're it. We're going to have to wait and see, but I'm going to I put know, on yeah. the spot a little bit. Uh, and I want you to make your your opinion on it right now. Do you think he's going to play Australia? I think he will. So you think they're going to not they're, it's going, with the vaccine? It's not going to be a set, uh, compulsory to take a vaccine. There's a lot still... of talk. They're, 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 they're going to push it through. They're going to make it. Well, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And in that case, we're pretty certain that Djokovic won't be playing. There's part of me that thinks there's still time to go before the Australian Open and there's still a lot of uh, things that can be worked out in the meantime. So uh, I know that they put their foot down. They're very adamant. Uh, I don't want to turn this into a vaccine pod, uh, but uh, they put their foot down and they've said that they're not going to change anything. But we don't know. The world's changing very rapidly at this uh, this last two years and there's been groundbreaking things. There's been other stuff happening on a regular weekly basis. So I'm not going to put all my eggs in the basket, but I'm going to say I reckon that Djokovic does go. He wants a 10th title. Uh, I I just don't think there's anything that can stop him, really. I mean, will he have to get vaccinated? I don't know. Maybe he'll just get vaccinated. Well, we don't know yet. So that's what I mean. In the chat, guys, what you think. Do you think Djokovic will be playing Australia? Uh, looking here, we've got Jugoslav saying, sure. Her guy saying he will play. It's too important to miss. That's what I think. Uh, 12 travel to Djokovic will do whatever it takes to be in Oz. I think so. Uh, Serzan, yes, 100%. I, just... I think I think potentially it could be maybe they have to do the quarantine for two, two weeks if you're not fully vaccinated. Yeah. And he may elect to go that route. Um, oh, for sure just quarantine, he would. Uh, quarantine. And you know, he has like, I think he had like a villa or something last time. So most likely he'll do something like that, I reckon. I, I, I perfect. I, I think if it's perfectly acceptable for him to do that, that's that might be the route he takes. Who knows? He might just get vaccinated. I don't think he's ever spoken out about being anti-vax or anything like that. So I don't think there's going to be as big an issue as everybody's making. I think Djokovic will find a way. They will want him there because he puts bums on seats and he is sort of going to be going for number 10. And that is a massive thing. And they will want that in their tournament as well. So I'm sure they will be working around the clock to try and find a way to get Djokovic into that tournament. Yeah. Anyway, let's wrap it up there. Congratulations, Novak Djokovic. He's done it again. Another title beating Medvedev. 37 Masters titles. Year-end number one. And he goes on, keeps going, keeps winning and sort of well, sets up nicely for the ATP finals, which is going to be the next big event we'll be covering. We've got the next-gen finals as well, and we've got the women's uh, finals too. So stay tuned on Game to Love. Make sure, if you haven't already, hit the like button for Novak Djokovic. Subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you for another podcast, maybe later tonight, regarding the next-gen finals, giving our official preview and thoughts on the event. Yeah, it's going to be fun. See you then.